We are able to now officially say that Jeremy Roach has played his final game for the Duke Blue Devils. Roach has declared for the 2024 NBA draft while maintaining his college eligibility and entering his name into the NCAA transfer portal. Let's talk about it on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils. Your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It is so great to have you here with us on Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. Lockdown Blue Devils is your one stop shop to discuss everything going on in the life of Duke athletics. And we talk a whole lot about Duke men's basketball. The big news of the day that we're discussing is Jeremy Roach's decision to enter the NBA draft, maintaining his college eligibility and entering the NCAA transfer portal. That full conversation with our good pal, Kevin Conley, who's the site expert for Ball Durham. We're going to have our scholarship outlook to share you all with you all on today's show, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. If you have not done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to Lockdown Blue Devils for free wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Also, make sure that you leave us a five-star rating and written review on the Apple Podcast platform. does a whole lot of good for the algorithms. If you're an everydayer on the program, let me know. Comment down below that you're an everydayer on this program. Seeing several of those over the last few days and appreciate all of your support here for the show. And watch our show each and every day on YouTube. Like the video, share this video with your friend, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel as Locked On Blue Devils is a daily podcast, everything Duke, locked on your team every single day. So without further ado, excited to bring him on in. It's our good friend, Kevin Conley, who's here with us once again. He was back with us last week. And Kevin, we were just talking before we started recording here today uh, that uh, you've been pretty spot on with all the predictions that you made on the show last week in regards to recent decisions being made by these Duke players and for those watching us on YouTube, we've got kind of a summary of a lot of those decisions on the side of the screen. Yeah, so, you know, after the season ended in the loss against NC State, we put up an article uh, over at Ball Durham predicting what everyone on the roster, all the scholarship players on the roster were going to do. And um, we've pretty much nailed it. We had four guys returning in Caleb Foster, Tyrese Proctor, TJ Power, and Sean Stewart. We had four guys entering the transfer portal with Mark Mitchell, Jalen Blakes, Jaden Shute, and Christian Reeves. And then we had three guys turning pro, Kyle Filipowski, Jared McCain, and Jeremy Roach. So out of those 11, I guess you can grade us as a 10 and a half out of 11 because Jeremy Roach obviously making the announcement last night that he is entering the 2024 NBA draft but maintaining his college eligibility and uh, entering the transfer portal as well. So his Duke career comes to an end. I guess it's still unknown yet. What is he going to do? Is he going to uh, keep his name in the draft and turn pro, or will he withdraw and go into the transfer portal? Um, it seems like all indications early, right as of right now, um, signal that he is going to withdraw his name because um, he's not going to be drafted and come back to college for his fifth year. Yeah, uh, Adam Zagoria, a New York Times sports reporter, has reported. He also had a big story uh, last week about Tyrese Proctor making the decision to come back. He's reported that early buzz out there for Roach with Kentucky, St. John's, and Arkansas. Obviously, Kentucky would be really strange for Duke fans to see. And also, let's remember, we play Kentucky in the Champions Classic in this upcoming college basketball season. Kind of fine with Roach going to any of those other schools listed but, uh, yeah, something about him wearing that Kentucky uniform wouldn't sit too well with many Duke fans, and it would just be kind of weird to see. Well, yeah, I can confirm the interest in uh, b between St. John's and Jeremy Roach in his camp as well. And don't forget, um, Duke could also play Arkansas next year as well in Cameron Indoor Stadium in a return game in the ACC-SEC Challenge. And um, for a little bit of time there, although talks have fallen apart, um, there was a conversation that – Duke was going to play St. John's next season in New York in Arthur Ashe Stadium where they host uh, the U.S. Tennis Championships, the U.S. Open Tennis Championship. But those talks have fallen through, so it doesn't look, that, look, look like that game is going to happen. But 
Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where Jeremy Roach lands. Perhaps uh, he will get a chance to play Duke next year if he were to land at Kentucky or even at Arkansas if they get a rematch in the ACC SEC challenge. Yeah, because you that, you bring up that point itself in the in the kind of St. John's rumors there because yeah, if he goes to one of those three schools, there is the real possibility that you're going to see them go head to head. I know for North Carolina, they're thinking a lot about Caleb Love. Uh, who played for them for three seasons, obviously helped lead the Tar Heels to that national title game in Coach K's final season. He's playing at Arizona. North Carolina and Arizona were set to match up in the Elite Eight. Neither team got there, but those are one of those weird settings, man, where, yeah, you could play your former team at the college level. Yeah, you certainly can, especially now, and it almost feels like uh, those things get paired up in the NCAA tournament, although – um, the selection committee will say they don't take any of that into effect. Uh, I always stick my nose up at that and say, yeah, you guys probably do because, hey, it's good for ratings. It's good for TV. It's good for fans. It's good for engagement. Um, so why not do it? But uh, obviously still a lot to be determined between then then and now. Um, but for Jeremy Roach, I think if he ever does play Duke um, and say it does happen at a Cameron Indoor Stadium and he does go to an Arkansas or something like that, I think he'll get – um, a much deserved standing, o- multiple minute standing ovation uh, from the Duke faithful. Jeremy Roach announced in his post, he said, quote, Duke Nation, thank you for a special four years. My experience at Duke has been unforgettable and made me a better person, leader, and player. To Coach K, Coach Shire, and all of my other coaches, teammates, manager, and support staff, thank you for believing in me, pushing me, and helping me become the best version of myself. I am forever grateful to be part of the brotherhood. To the Cameron Crazies, thank you for making Duke a special place to play. Some of the best memories of my life are because of you all, so thank you. With that being said, I'll be declaring for the 2024 NBA draft while maintaining my college eligibility and entering the transfer portal. Thank you again for everything. I'll always be a Blue Devil, and I'm so grateful to have been able to call Duke home for the last four years. End quote. That is signed, Jeremy Roach. Germ as uh, the Duke social media staff was known to call him over the years, a two-time captain for this Duke basketball team. How do you think we got to this decision, Kevin? Well, it's it's complicated because um, I, I think you can make the argument that no player experienced more variety in their seasons than Jeremy Roach has over the course of four years at Duke, right? Well said, yeah. You look at his freshman season, um, it's – impacted due to COVID. It looks like Duke is finally putting everything together and going to make a run in the ACC tournament, and it stops short because the team um, gets COVID, and then they miss the NCAA tournament. His sophomore season, um, it was up and down, let's be honest, and there were a lot of rumors midway through the season going into the NCAA tournament that Roach was going to enter the transfer portal, and then he has this great NCAA tournament, helps and leads Duke into the Final Four in Coach K's final season, And then as John Shire is taking over, it's like, okay, this kid is ready to take the next step and become a leader. So he doesn't go into the transfer portal. He announces he's returning to Duke for his junior season. He gets named as one of the captains of John Shire's first team at Duke. Um, And then he's a leader. He battles injury a lot through his junior season. I think he maybe only missed two or three games where he probably should have been a a lot longer than that. Um, and it's a Duke team that goes on and wins an ACC tournament championship. And obviously they fall short in the NCAA tournament in the round of 32 against Tennessee um, because they're shorthanded and Mark Mitchell is injured. And then uh, you look at his senior season and he's playing so well. He's playing the two guard with Tyrese Proctor. Um, and, and I should backtrack because he declares for the NBA draft after his junior season, test the right. waters. And I don't think that really even lasted two weeks before he withdrew his name and announced he was returning to Duke. Uh, And then he's another, he's a captain again his senior year. And uh, you have this team that's really hyped, but then you see him on the court and it's like, I don't know how good they are, but he shoots close to 40% from three. And uh, yes, it didn't end on a great note, losing in the first round of the ACC tournament and then losing in the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament to the same team you lost to in the ACC tournament at NC State. And and Roach didn't play a great game in that game. But um, yeah, I think... Uh, When you look back at Jeremy Roach's time over Duke, you have to be really thankful and grateful that he stayed four years. Um, It was no smooth sailing by any stretch of the imagination. Um, And certainly um, he will be remembered at some point as a great Blue Devil. 
Averaged 14 points this past season on way to an all ACC campaign. So really good stuff from Mr. Roach. Let's take our first time out of today's show. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the future of the Duke basketball team. Now that we know another player decision going into next season. Lockdown Blue Devils here today. I want to tell you about a new sponsor. It is Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind great investors. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data that you need in one place. The number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective of what is what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures that you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community of over 90 million users each month, their real estate is helping you on your way to financial success for comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. Again, that's yahoofinance.com, a proud sponsor of Locked On Blue Devils. All right, we'll keep it moving here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, but we do want to let you know that tonight, April 17th, at 7 p.m. Eastern, it's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Live at 7 p.m. Once again, streaming on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series starting today at 7 p.m. Eastern to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 YouTube streaming channel, or the free Amazon Fire TV channel apps. As we bring back in Kevin Conley, who's going to be intrigued by mock drafts as we go over these next eight days until the NFL Draft. Duke's got Graham Barton on the offensive line, who's expected to be a first-round pick, and Kevin Conley's just saying, please, can the New York Jets have a promising 2024 football season? Oh, man, that's what I'm hoping. That's what I need. That's what I needed. Who knows? Maybe they need another Duke football player. They have Michael <laughs> Carter a second in, in the secondary. Um, they've had a bunch of other Duke players. They have a long snapper, Thomas Hennessy. So who knows? Maybe uh, they need more Duke players to get better. And, Kevin, you can never have enough offensive linemen. You know, you can never have enough. Uh, with how grueling and, and kind of dominant that position is. So it uh, should be a lot of fun. Locked on NFL mock draft tonight at 7 p.m. all across the network. Let's get back to Duke talking about the decisions made by the roster. And uh, I'm going to go back to the guard position in particular because that does factor in uh, Jeremy Roach for this next season, the 2024-2025 season. We've learned that Tyrese Proctor and Caleb Foster are set to return. They announced that on the Brotherhood podcast that was hosted by Ryan Young as he did the entire last season. I loved that little twist and angle that he might be out of eligibility, but dang, he's going to get to host another episode of the Brotherhood podcast. And those guys were talking about how locked in they are. What did you make of that news, Kevin? I thought it was great. I thought it was expected. Um, I think now Duke has... Uh, I, I don't like calling sophomores veterans, but two veterans in the backcourt, especially with Proctor, who's going to be the point guard, and Caleb Foster, who's going to be the shooting guard. And I've said throughout this month on Ball Durham, for as much talent Duke has coming in to this program in the freshman class, they don't have ball handlers. They don't have guards. They have shooters, but they don't have guys that can handle the basketball well. And I, that's why I thought it was so imperative to bring two out of the four of Proctor, Foster, Roach and McCain back um, more specifically two out of the three excluding McCain because he wasn't really a ball handler on this team and John Shire did it he brings back Tyrese Proctor he brings back Caleb Foster two guys that you can trust running point um, obviously it'll be Tyrese Proctor at the one Caleb Foster at the two and then the pieces will um, unveil uh, 
further down the depth chart from small forward down to center. Yeah, uh, but the guard focus in particular, the fact that you've got those guys coming back with experience in Foster and Proctor uh, on the podcast, both guys saying they're a thousand percent committed to Duke. Really, the transfer portal wasn't much of an idea for them. Uh, Proctor talking about uh, he'll go back home to Australia for mm -hmm. about a month or so before he returns back uh, for the summer basketball program. Caleb Foster seems like he's going to be in Durham a little bit longer, starting his rehab, continuing his rehab fully from that foot injury uh, that he suffered at the end of the season and had a successful surgery on the defensive end of the floor too. So many people want to talk about kind of the struggles offensively in that game that Duke had against NC State in the Elite Eight going 0 for 9. But, I mean, how about the work that Tyrese Proctor put in defensively in that matchup against Houston? And when you've got a team that's going to be filled with a lot of younger guys like Duke's bringing in and the freshmen, you have got to commit yourself to having a lot of pride on the defensive end of the floor. And next season, unlike the previous few, when we've been talking a lot about the experience at the back end, I think we're going to need the guard play on the defense to really be impressive as well. Well, yeah, I mean, I look at the biggest thing that wins in March is it's guards, right? And Duke is going to have a guard that they trust and they're going to rely on in Tyrese Proctor, who can play both sides of the basketball. And I think that is huge. Um, you mentioned, look at the last play of the game against Houston. Tyrese Proctor was there with the defensive stop. His defense had been great throughout the season when he had been on the court. So, yeah, I think he's almost a perfect leader. You'd imagine he's going to be a captain once again. Maybe he's the only captain on this Duke team. I don't know if Caleb Foster will be named as a captain um, as a sophomore. The same thing goes with Sean Stewart or TJ Power. I doubt that they do end up being named captains as a sophomore, although Tyrese Proctor was a right, captain. that's what I was going to say. Yep. As a sophomore, you don't know that. So um, definitely Proctor will be a captain as a junior. Um, I don't think a transfer they're going to bring in gets named captain right away. So um, he's he's the leader. He's going to step into the shoes that Quinn Cook and Jeremy Roach had. And can he live up to those standards? Uh, we're going to find out in <laughs> about six, seven months. The Duke basketball team led the ACC in three-point shooting. They were one of the top teams in the entire country uh, in three-point shooting as well. These two guards in the backcourt weren't the best of shooters, right? We're thinking of Roach at the 40% mark. We're thinking of Jared McCain and how great he was. But Foster and Proctor can knock them down from the outside, and we're going to need that again next year. Well, Proctor has the potential, right? He's been so, so inconsistent with this shot, but – it's really surprising. It goes very much under the radar. Caleb Foster was a 40% three-point shooter, too. Okay. Yeah. Like, it, it goes – like, Good point. A, lot of, yeah, a lot of people don't really realize that, don't really um, know that. But Caleb Foster was a 40% three-point shooter, and I think he gets forgotten because he wasn't on the floor the last four weeks of the season or so. Getting hurt in late February against Wake Forest and then not playing – Again, I think a lot of people forgot about how good he was when he was on the floor. And I did. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> and I think those shooting um, numbers in terms of like the amount of shots he takes are probably going to go up a little bit, um, just playing more minutes and probably starting every game now. Um, you know, I mean, Cooper Flagg's going to demand a lot of shots as well. Um, you go down the recruiting class, Darren Harris, elite shooter. Um, can he get on the floor as well and shoot? So um, it's going to be interesting, the shot distribution that Duke has next season. But Caleb Foster, yeah, he's going to be right at the top of the line of those great Duke shooters next season. So what does the rest of the roster look like for this Duke basketball team? We're going to have that conversation and discuss a little bit more. We're going to give you the scholarship outlook that you all love so much. I've posted it on Twitter the last few days, but it's been updated with Jeremy Roach's decision. So we'll take a look at that and a whole lot more when we come back here on Locked On Blue Devils. All right, Lockdown Blue Devils here today. We got to tell you about Monopoly Go. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back into the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. We're talking about the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go that lets you compete with your friends 
to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. You can play on countless dynamic monopoly boards, make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball, charge other players rent for your iconic properties and more. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put your game face on, and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or on Google Play. Monopoly Go is a proud sponsor of Locked On Blue Devils. Let's keep it moving here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. I'm JJ Jackson, joined today by Kevin Conley, who's the site expert for Ball Durham. He's on X at Kevin Conley24. Tell us a little bit about Ball Durham as well, Kevin. Everything you could possibly want on balldurham.com about this Duke basketball offseason. Um, obviously, recapping what's happening in terms of the current roster movement, transfer portal additions. Um, everything you could possibly want. NBA playoffs started last night. Um, Zion Williamson injured after scoring 40 points against the Los Angeles Lakers. And I think the Pelicans now have to play again on Thursday and needing to win that game in order to make the NBA playoffs. So yeah, Friday um, they'll be playing. Yep. Friday. Yep. So we're all over that story as well. Um, so yeah, we got a ton uh, of stuff over there at Ball Durham. Go check it out. It's a lot of good stuff. Uh, you mentioned the NBA playoffs. You mentioned the roster for this season, what also is set to happen, and you're so good over at Ball Durham, we're about to have some major high school basketball recruiting circuits pick up. And right now, there are no commitments in the class of 2025, as folks can see on our scholarship chart here. So excited to see the next Blue Devils. Hopefully, we can get a commitment from the Boozer Twins and get off running there uh, with the Stuke basketball team. But with that being said, we look at the scholarship layout, and now that Jeremy Roach will not use his COVID year of eligibility at Duke, we look at the situation here and following Jaden Shute, Jalen Blakes, Christian Reeves, Mark Mitchell's decision to not return and enter the portal, along with McCain and Filipowski, who had eligibility from this last year's team. Duke's got three open scholarship spots. What do you see when you look at all of this, Kevin? Well, what I see in terms of next year's roster is they do need to add another guard that can handle the ball and is willing to come off the bench. I think that's really important because, yes, Proctor and Foster can handle the basketball, but they need somebody else that can be willing to come off the bench, provide them anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes per game, and just give those guys a little bit of a break and be confident with them. Um, running the offense and handling the basketball. I think that is a, a priority. Another priority, I think, is a center. Um, I, again, I'm sorry I'm going to butcher his name. I'll get these names all down when we get closer to the season. But uh, come on, Maluk. I, I know I said that wrong, but um, this is a projected top three center, but he's still very raw. He has a lot to learn. He really just started playing basketball. He has all the things you can't teach. He has size. He has length. He can nearly dunk the basketball without even jumping. So he... I think would be your starting center, very comparable to Derek Lively. Derek Lively, who uh, probably was a little bit more developed offensively coming into Duke, but he was that defensive anchor, can block shots, um, has to learn how to rotate and all that stuff. But I think Duke wants to add, should add a veteran center behind him, bigger than Ryan Young, but a Ryan Young type that is comfortable coming off the bench, being a leader, but not playing 27 minutes a game. And then I think the other uh, other spot has to be a, a player, like a, a, a wing, somebody that can play the three, somebody that can play the four, someone that's not afraid to stick their nose in the paint and rebound um, and do a really good job defending. Because like we said earlier in the show, Proctor, Foster, um, Flag, they're going to command a lot of shots in a game. So Duke doesn't need somebody else that can uh, that wants a lot of shots. They want one of those glue guys, those dirty guys who you're not going to, nothing's going to pop out to you uh, in the box score, but you're going to see that he blocked two shots, grabbed eight rebounds and scored four points. And that's a perfect night for that specific player. So I think those are the three things Duke should really prioritize going into the transfer portal to fill these final three scholarship spots. Uh, and then obviously you're, you're hoping for uh, the next step from guys currently on the roster, like a Sean Stewart, Ken Sean Stewart, be that type of player that Duke is looking for that can block shots and rebound and run the floor and spread things out. Um, Patrick Ngangba, I was very impressed with him 
at Chipotle Nationals, hadn't played throughout the entire season, um, had foot surgery, came back for Chipotle Nationals, and in the three games that Paul the Six played, got better and better and better. Now, he didn't play at the Nike Hoop Summit out of precaution, doesn't want to overdo things. I don't think he's going to play at the Jordan Brand Classic in Brooklyn this weekend either. Um, but it feels like just seeing him in those three games and what he could do and the fact that he has an outside game as well, I think he could play a big factor um, on this roster next year. Without a doubt. I think the other thing to add in, in in regards to beyond the positions, one, to your point, glue guys I think would be so huge with just the talent that Duke already has on next year's roster. If they can knock down outside shots at a good clip, that's really going to help. Uh, when you're talking about a team that, you know, shooting in March really helps you kind of win those championships and get over. You don't want to be kind of a, a negative on the offensive end of the floor too much. But then even beyond that, Kevin, let's look at the color code here on our scholarship outlook as well. Just some level of seniority maturity, I think, could really benefit this Duke team as well because there are a lot of young guys coming into this locker room who do not have much college basketball experience at all. No, that's right. And and I agree with you that I think that some of these additions should be um, your juniors and seniors type. But um, the one thing I'll say, and I wanted to add it um, when we talked earlier about Tyrese Proctor and his defense, and it, it all goes back to Cooper Flagg. And, and obviously everyone has waxed poetically about this kid um, for the past several years. But um, we talked about how how many shots he's going to demand. He's also elite defensively. He could yep. switch multiple possessions and, and, and also adding um, come on as well as, as, with, as a rim protector. Um, I think this Duke team next year could be very good defensively. Um, with that being said, I also think Cooper flag is mature beyond his years. If you ever watch him play, whether it be on the AAU circuit or high school basketball, um, it felt like the, the moment was never too big for him, even with all this attention that he gets playing on a Montverde team that's trying to win the national championship and is undefeated. And he's the focal point of the team. Um, just the, he always was able to stay in the moment and deliver for his team. So, um, yes, I do think Duke does need to add um, a little bit more of a veteran presence to this roster. Um, but I do think guys like Cooper Flagg, Tyrese Proctor, Caleb Foster um, have uh, are going to be leaders on this team, and, and the moment's not going to be too big for them. Three open scholarships, three very popular names that we've heard attached to the Stuke program already. Amari Williams from Drexel. Uh, we're talking about Malik Brown from Syracuse, who's actually on a visit with Duke starting today. And then Mason Gillis, very experienced player from Purdue in the fold as well, Kevin. So uh, while Duke hadn't quite officially had public news about the Jeremy Roach decision, right, or the Jaden Shute decision within the last 24, 48 hours, they'd already been pretty active in kind of setting the roster up in the transfer portal. Yeah, when you look at a player like Mason Gillis, um, flew under the radar at Purdue. I think a lot of players did because you have the National Player of the Year in Zach Eady. <laughs> Pretty um, easy to do so. Yeah, He shot 47% from three-point range. I mean, and yes, obviously, he, he took a lot of them, 124, only averaged um, six and a half points per game, four rebounds. I think that's a player that would fit. Um, I'm not entirely sold on Amari Williams just because I don't know how much playing time is available at that position for Duke uh, this upcoming season. And I know other schools are in the mix for him that he's uh, scheduled uh, visits for four of them already. Um, Indiana, which I don't know is a factor anymore now that they just got Omar Ballo um, from Arizona. I know St. John's was in the mix. Creighton was in the mix. Um, the other school I'm blanking on, it might have been Nebraska. That was in the mix for him as well. And then Duke joined the fray late. So I don't know how much of a fit Amari Williams would want to come to Duke with playing time not readily available for him. Um, so, yeah, I think but those are the three types of players that Duke is trying to add to this team, as well as um, a, a veteran backup point guard. Well, we know one thing. You're going to be following it all along over the next few days. Uh, glad that people were able to start their Wednesdays hearing you and I discuss the big news with Jeremy Roach declaring for the draft and entering the portal. One more time, Kevin, promote your work and everything you got going on. Well, you can read us every single day at balldurham.com. 
Um, like I said, we have everything going on right now in the world of the transfer portal and roster reconstruction. And then on social media, um, we're on X, or as you might want to call it, Twitter, um, at ball underscore Durham. So um, we have a bunch of content over there as well. So I uh, want to thank everyone that has uh, followed us and, and read us. Um, we're doing great this month over at Ball Durham. So I uh, want to appreciate everyone that's read our stuff um, since this season ended. And I want people to know how awesome of a person you are, Kevin. I mean, a late night last night, the guys on ESPN Plus, a play-by-play broadcaster for baseball games taking place, and uh, still enough time to keep up with all this Duke news and joining me on the podcast as you do every single week. Seriously, thank you, Kevin. Good to see you. And uh, let's go get some hoopers in the transfer portal for our Duke Blue Devils, all right? Thanks, JJ. And like <laughs> it, like I said, it feels like the season's exciting, but I don't know, for whatever reason, transfer portal and all, the early offseason always feels like, like the most exciting part of the season. No doubt. We'll talk to you next week, Kevin. Thanks, JJ. All right, that's Kevin Connolly, the site expert from Ball Durham, joining us here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils, and that's going to do it for our show here today. Thank you for your support. As always, again, be sure to subscribe and follow this podcast for free wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, share it with your friends, comment down below that you're an everydayer. I love to see what our community looks like. And if you've got any questions for us to answer, we're due for some Mailbag Monday episodes of Locked On Blue Devils. So send those our way. We'll load them up and we'll answer them in future episodes of Locked On Blue Devils. That'll do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.